Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're bringing you an unboxing and a review of a keyboard I have yet had a chance to play with. But I must say I previously picked up these caps. Um, if you know what they are by looking at the container, they're hex gears. They're these soda um, ASA caps. They appear to be the same moldings as the Akko. Now, uh, this keycap set goes for $30, comes in a can, and practically, I have found works with almost all, including 64 key. Yes, it has a single shift and a single delete, or a single one U, delete and one U shift. So, I was honestly surprised. Um, these keycaps, though, they're kind of pudding, they're not really, because they're, they're actually made of two different pieces, a polycarbonate um, piece and a PPT top. So, um, and it's actually double shunk. So I was honestly quite impressed uh, with the keycaps. I actually ended up getting the other colors as well. I did some pictures and I think I did a review video. But anyway, I was put in touch with um, their marketing team and they're like, hey, would you like to take a look at our Soda 68? And I'm like, well, I love 65% boards. So sure, let's take a look at it. So today I'm unboxing this kit. It is available on their website. Um, as a uh, disclaimer, this was sent to me as a review unit for free, but I was not asked or even intimated to say anything other than my opinion. Um, I usually receive discounts. This is actually, honestly, the first full board that I've gotten for free that I've done a review on um, on their behalf. And all they said was to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I do like their keycaps. Um, now this board is listed at $129, which is a little bit on the higher range, but I do want to say <clears throat> it's very substantial. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what comes in this case because it weighs plenty. And if I had my, I keep moving my scale because I, I was doing shipping. Um, I would like to weigh this. I also, just real quick, I wanted to, uh, Say yeah, thank you to everybody for their patience. I know I haven't put out a video here in a little while. I had spinal surgery uh, a week ago, and I'm still recuperating. Um, it's much easier uh, than it has been for a while, but it's still going to take me a couple of weeks. So content is going to be slow, but I've actually been through a whole bunch of things that happened with RMK and everything. I've been put in contact with a lot of people that want to help me with my audio and production and everything like that. So we'll see how that goes. No promises yet, but uh, more content will be coming and hopefully um, my production value will continue to go up as it has. So anyway, so we've got a nice shrink wrap package here. We're gonna go ahead and open this puppy up and take off the shrink wrap and see what we've got in this. I mean, it's actually a quite nice box. I mean, obviously, it's better than just your plain white box with uh, misspelled words or odd phrases. So, huh? Not good. All right. All right. Anyway, so got the nice little cover and it does have some of the uh, specifics the type type of um so this is using a kale box switch b2 um usb a to usb c 2.4 bluetooth version 5 5 volt 500 milliamp huh I'm actually even has a price listed on here of 149. Now I know they're selling it for 129. I don't know if they're going to be doing it for 149 on eBay or other marketplaces. So okay, let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what makes this keyboard so substantial. All right. First, let's check out what we've got in the compartments. I like to look at the goodies first. Got one of the the better keycap pullers, although oh, it's pretty good, and a decent um, switch puller. 
And then we have a braided USB-C yellow. Now, I mean, I, I like uh, braided USB-C. I like coiled USB-C. Um, but I also like them to match in color. I'm kind of interested what what I missed here. I mean, I see there's a little yellow here. But, all right, that's neither here nor there. Now, all right, so the bulk of the weight is actually the keyboard. This is one hefty keyboard, and here we have the manual. All right, so let's set this stuff aside. Let me use you. All right, now it's definitely very well packaged. Now there is one thing that I do like about this. Um, uh, at home I don't use a wrist rest because I have an angled under the keyboard um, drawer. All right, there we go. That, that's where it opens. So I'm able to angle that out. But sometimes on the run I do need a key rest. Now this is one thing that is interesting. Well, it's got an interesting line. All right, so it has a dust cap cover, but what else does this dust cap cover do? Um, am I missing something? Oh. Uh, all right, I guess you gotta latch it underneath. I thought it just went up to it, but that latch underneath is to make sure it doesn't pull away. All right, well, that I've got to say that's a pretty cool thing, especially if you're going to be traveling with this board. Um, not for nothing, I have thrown keyboards into a backpack and just gone about my business, and I go to pull the keyboard out, and I got keycaps just floating at the bottom of my bag, and I got to go searching for them. So, having something to protect the keycaps is definitely nice. I'm not sure if I, I'm a big fan of this implementation because see how it wants to like hook, but it's like, so I have to pick up the keyboard and put it underneath or put it into a certain slot. It just seems to have a groove. So it looks like it should just sit. Okay, yeah. Well, I like this. I'm not sure about the implementation. Another thing about this, they did put this cool line, but not that it has that much of a height difference, but it could mess with you because one side is a little textured while the other one is, is more sleek. So I don't know if that's gonna affect much, but it is the perfect height. So there's that, but I think that's kind of a, I don't know, the video made me think that this was going to be a really cool, just snap into place and maybe have something to lock, but this means I have to pick up the keyboard, fight with the magnet. See, if I don't hold this in place, see what happens? If I try to, if I try to do this one-handed, it ain't never going to happen. So I, I, I can't say I'm that fond of that, but again, I don't hardly use wrist rest. Now, this keyboard does have a lot of padding inside of it. Oh, sorry about that. As we can see, we've got the 2.4 um, receiver right here. And in following with the trend, it has a, oh, well, look at there. That This is something new. So you can either plug it into a USB-C or USB-A, and you're going to uh, get connectivity. That's pretty cool. This is something definitely that I have not seen yet, and I've got to say that's that's pretty cool. I, just, I think I put the cover on the wrong side. Yeah, there we go. Let's have a magnet under there holding it. Then we also have the switches on and off and then if we're going to be using Bluetooth or wired. So here we are. Wait, I'll put it on the wired mode but obviously it's not plugged in. So let's see 
how the RGB looks. Whoa! That's pretty. Now, of course, you know, being that this is a almost completely transparent, I think they kind of... I've got to say, I think they, they, they lost an opportunity to make this a silicone that was trans, translucent, like maybe matching the color. Um, but that's just me. Now, out of the box. I've got to say, this actually sounds... I gotta stop doing that when I'm plugged in. <laughs> so I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how um, these keys sound stock. I'm going to. All right, so I'm. I have not tried uh, these box switches I thought they were tactiles but I mean if it's a tactile it's about as tactile as a brown now right there I don't know how close I can get to it without it coming out of focus I don't know if you guys can see the LED let me turn it off Turn this off. All right. Can you guys see the LED? Come on, focus. Could you please focus? There we go. Now, see that LED? That LED means there are a ton of switches that this keyboard will not work with. I mean, even if you don't care about LED, you're going to have switches such as these. Oh, no, this one has a window. Never mind. Let me find a switch that doesn't have a window. I should have one around here. Let me see where the are. All right. Here's the Gatoron ink, uh, pink, pink ink. And as you can see, where there's normally an LED window, you really only have the, uh, the four holes to put an LED through. This is meant for surface mount diode LEDs. So if I were to go ahead and stick this in here, legs look lined up, but guess what? It won't go any further. Why is that? because that LED is above the, um, the PCB. So the only switches you're gonna be able to use are ones that have the complete window, that have that entire chunk off the bottom taken out. Now for some of us, that won't be a problem, but I have a lot of switches that do not have that yeah, that one just went in just fine because it has the space to take um, that hole. But this one, this one isn't even going to go in enough to make contact because that LED prevents it. I mean, unless you're going to go and rummel a hole out of each one of your switches to make them work, I just don't see this being a good idea um so thus far magnetic dust dust cover that also acts as a rest rest it's a little um gimmicky second the pcb does not seem to be of good quality i mean these should be surface mount diodes if my understanding is correct the price difference in not only acquiring the leds and installing them is roughly a cent and a half. So, why are you trying to save so much money? Now, if this was a $45, $50 pre-built, well, I, 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 we can deal with it. 
This is $129, $149 MSRP for that. Plus also, only three pins. They didn't even bother to, I mean, that was another reason that my pink wasn't going in. But I mean, even if I do say, hey, let's go ahead and take a pink. I know this is sacrilege almost, but let me go ahead and clip these extra legs off. So that now it'll fit into my keyboard, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it still won't go in, why? Why won't it go in? Why won't it go all the way in? Now see, it does kind of go in, but it's not connected. Like, because, I don't know if you could see the difference, but basically it's enough of a distance for it to keep it from connecting to what's inside the clips and then actually make the connections to the switch. So, where did the original switch go? So, why they did not allow that to be... I mean, why bother even making it hot swap at this point? I mean, you obviously only wanted it to work with one set of switches. So, um, so initial reactions, I mean, this is substantial board. It probably weighs just below a kilo, a uh, pound and a half, I would say, roughly, pound and one fifth but box keyboard now, I do like that it has those lights uh, oh those are the magnetic now that oh, okay. this, so, I mean I guess it's nice that this also you know sticks it's using magnets also to stick on top not really a big fan of being able to see the magnets But yeah, let me check out these stabs because I am, I am, I am impressed with the stabs though. They do seem to be of good quality. Now. Let me check. Yeah, there's hardly no wobble to speak of. Huh? huh. Plate is already scratched, and uh, I just took off the. Uh, Stabilizer bar I didn't use anything metal. I mean and the plate was already scratched so the stabilizers look pretty good and Surprisingly enough very lightly lubed. I mean Looks like they just put the minimal amount of lube in there right inside Of the stem it's gonna be hard to see but there is a little bit of lube in there, but it's not over Globbed like a lot of um, OEMs tend to do But I am, I, I can't, cannot lie, this is probably one of the um, the better pre builts out of the box. This definitely blows any of the Akko pre-built boards that I've bought out of the water, hands down. Um, I mean, I definitely feel the tactility. Like, it might be a little bit stronger than the brown, but not by much. It's just enough to realize that you've got a tactile board on here all right so what i'm going to do is i was going to say a piece of one of the little pinks what i'm going to go ahead and do is do a um just a stock sound test of how it sounds out of the box and then i'll do another video later on while i'll, while I'll tear it down see what it's all built in and and see if actually there's enough room to get those switches to work, although I don't think there will be because I've dealt with other PCBs like this. Um, putting that LED as a surface mount on the side where the LED sits, not on the back side, SMD style, is leads me to think that this board is either poorly designed or poorly manufactured. Now that's just my opinion based on what I've seen, but for a board that is brand new to be using technology that is years old, I don't know. I mean, are they taking a pre-existing product and just reloading it with new firmware and giving it a new case and calling it a new thing? Um, I don't know. But 
out of the box, I'm very impressed with its weight. I am very impressed with how it sounds, but I am non, not very happy about the uh, switch situation. I don't want to have to clip off uh, legs off of five pinners, and I don't want to have to check if, well, is the window big enough to fit over the SMD LED. So, um, I am, huh. honestly, I find it hard to recommend, though as good as it is out of the box and how well it's built, if you are the type of person that's going to be switching out switches, keycaps, modifying all of that, this probably isn't the board for you. That said, if you're looking for a 65% board that basically works out of the box, is wireless, has a rest rest, may not be perfect but you're never planning to really do much to it except maybe add a little bit more juice to the stabs this might actually be a good buy um for myself it is not i i, I would not i i wouldn't pay more than 50 60 dollars for this keyboard as is uh because there's just not much more life i can give to it if i can't change out the switches now granted the switches they've got they don't seem awful their kale box switches which i am just personally not a fond fan of because anytime you open them if you happen to pop the lid off and that little tiny button is lost well that switch is done um it's one thing having a spring jump out i'll just pull out my magnet and find it but that little tiny plastic piece i don't know how many box switches i've ruined just by trying to put a little bit of lube in there just to make sure they're not as scratchy and then oops i accidentally tapped that part i don't like the design i think it's a very poor design i think it needs to be um just retired uh the regular box uh, works just fine um so anyway that's my opinion this may be the board to go to i mean if you can find this on sale for like 99 dollars and like I said, it's a board that you just want to throw in your backpack. You want something that sounds good, works, has decent battery life. Um, I want to say the, I want to say it's a four or five thousand milliamp hour battery. I mean, I gotta believe that's a good amount of the weight. I really want to see that silicone and obviously the battery. But I will be getting further into this. But for enthusiasts. I would say skip it. I mean, it's a great looking board. I love uh, the clear. Um, I really wish they would have done a clear silicone because having it halfway clear kind of just, it's like, did you give up somewhere along the line? And I'm trying to get the theme because, I mean, it's green for T and the yellow switch for Tank Town and the white because it's white. I mean, I just. I, I'm not sure. I do like that this is the first keyboard I've seen with a 2.4 C, a, a USB-C or USB-A um, dongle, which is quite interesting, which seems to sit in there magnetic, which is nice, but you have to take into consideration if you're going to be traveling with this, put a piece of tape over it. If this is in a case, it takes a nice hit. There it goes. So, I mean, I prefer when it's a combination of the two, when it's like, lot you know it's like a magnet but you also have to push it in place so it has a little little bit to hold it because that's just all that's going to happen to it if you put it in the case so while i like that it's poor design it's like did you guys qa see this beforehand i don't know um thank you to the hex gears team for sending this out to me um again i told you i'd be completely honest i still absolutely love your caps and i think that there is a market for this keyboard but i really think that you guys need to rethink the pricing on this 129 dollars for a 65 percent keyboard is too much it really is especially when you only have three pin compatibility and your led sits above the pcb those are cardinal sins there. I mean, PCB, it almost seems like you're trying to get rid of an older PCB. Let's just throw it in a new case. And it just doesn't seem right. I mean, 
I don't see where the price justification comes out in this. Anyway, um, that said, let's go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test. And as I heal up, more videos will be coming down the pipe. I'm still working on my 75%. I want to do it a little bit better than the 65%. Problem is, I've got a couple other 65% videos. So I'm probably going to have to do it kind of like on a quarterly basis. <laughs> What's the 65%? keyboards for this quarter what's the 75 percent keyboards for this quarter is i'm also going to do a tkl one and then i'm going to do all other form factors and cover the ones in between like 64 keys maybe some 40 percent and some also some 1800s full size and stuff like that so thank you all for watching my videos um, again if you guys ever have any questions feel free to drop it in the comments here i do my best to answer as many comments as I can. I mean, some, they're questions, but I'm not sure what they're asking. Um, and I'm always available either on our budget keeps on, on our Reddit, our subreddit, or on our Discord, which can be found in a link from our budget keeps. So until the next time, fellow keyboard enthusiasts, keep calm, keyboard on, and much peace and love from Bad Mark to you.